Moving our foot. Moving our foot. What are the movements that are possible at your foot? Well, we can dorsiflex our foot at the ankle joint. We can plantar flex our foot at the ankle joint, and we can invert and evert our foot. And I'm sure that there are other things that we can do, but those are the ones that we're going to be accountable for. Think about the muscle called tibialis anterior, and tell me where it's going to attach. It's going to attach to the anterior aspect of the tibia. That was rather um, challenging. Let's just go ahead and make a note that it's proximal. It's on the proximal side. And it's also, if you palpate it on yourself, it's lateral. It's the squishy mass of muscle that's lateral to your sharp shin bone. Feel your tibia and then go lateral, and that's tibialis anterior. Attaches to the anterior tibia. It's going to move your foot. Let me tell you its actions, and then you can tell me where it attaches. Primary actions, let's see. Tibialis anterior does dorsiflexion, and it also does inversion. So dorsiflex and invert, and can you feel like my tibialis anterior just turned into a rock because that's how buff studly I am. So where are we going to have another attachment? If we dorsiflex and invert, this is awesome, it attaches, it actually spans across and it attaches to metatarsal number one. Really? Yeah. How cool is that? So metatarsal number one, we, we actually have a crisscross. So let's go look at that guy, um, tibialis anterior. Look, there it is attached to the lateral and proximal part of the tibia, and it spans all the way across and attaches to the first metatarsal. So you can see how that actually would, we shorten this thing and we can get inversion of your footy. Aw, oh, invert that little footy. That's our anterior um, leg muscles. We've got two posterior leg muscles. These two share a distal attachment on the calcaneus. And who remembers what the calcaneus is? The calcaneus is what you walk upon when you dorsiflex for a duck walk. But of course, everybody knew exactly what I just said, right? Calcaneus is your heel bone. It's a tarsal, and the specific name of that tarsal is the calcaneus. Both gastrocnemius and soleus attach to the calcaneus via the Achilles tendon. That's an interesting fast fact. And they are on the posterior aspect of your leg. So um, soleus is deep, and soleus is proximal attachment. Yes. Let's make a note that it's a deep muscle. It's deep to gastrocnemius, and its proximal attachment is posterior tibia and a little bit of fibula. And it's deep to gastrocnemius, and gastrocnemius attaches, now this is an interesting attachment, gastrocnemius attaches to the medial and lateral epicondyles of who? Of the femur. Cool. So what are our actions of soleus and gastrocnemius? Well, both of them act to plantar flex. So you stand up on your tiptoes when you contract soleus and gastrocnemius. Only gastrocnemius also functions in leg flexion. Let's go look at these bad boys. Hello, boys. Look, gastrocnemius coming all the way down. Now, what? Seriously? This is like the toes 
Like, that, no, this is the posterior aspect. Don't be confused. Just, like, ignore that part. I'd put a little box over it if I could, but I can't. Gastrocnemius, you know because it's superficial. You know because, look, it has these two branching bellies that attach to the medial epicondyle of the femur, femur. And if we get rid of that guy, peel it down, whoa, that's cool, you can see, oops, you can see soleus right underneath that. The soleus actually does kind of look like a fish, like the sole fish. Doesn't it look kind of fishy? And you can see it, gastrocnemius sits on top of it superficially, and then you can see soleus around the edges. Soleus is a longer, flatter muscle, kind of creates some um, thickness in the ankle zone. What else do you need to know about anything on the planet? Anything you need to know? I don't think so. Did we fill it in all the way? We did. Whew. Nice work, team. You have inferior muscles under your belt, and now I'm leaving. It's been fantastic. Bye-bye.